In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the fuel injector on this Ford F-250 with the 5.4 liter engine. Let's get started. On the driver's side of the engine compartment, right behind the coolant overflow tank next to the brake master cylinder, you'll see the fuse box or the junction box that controls most of the electronics that have to do with the engine and transmission. On the front side of it, you'll see this tab that can be a little tricky to get to, but if you pry on it, it should lift up the cover for you. With the cover off, you'll see all the relays and fuses, and this right here, number 18, is the relay for the fuel pump that we have to pull so we can disable power to the fuel pump and therefore relieve fuel pressure. It's usually pretty tight in here space-wise, so getting some needle nose pliers on the relay will be the best way to get this out. Wiggle it back and forth and pull straight up. If you're gentle enough, it won't break, and there is the relay. At this point, we should have no power going to the fuel pump. Put the key in the ignition, and crank the engine over. It might start, but it should die out pretty quick. For us, it didn't even start, which is great. Fuel pressure has been relieved. Make sure you take the key out so that the battery doesn't die. And let's continue with our job. I'm only gonna show you how to replace the fuel injector on one side because the procedure is the same. And once you take one side fuel rail off, you would do the same procedure to all four injectors and then switch over to the other side, which is exactly the same, no extra steps required. Having said that, because this side is easier to see, I'm going to show you this one. Let's unplug the fuel injectors, and in order for us to get a little bit more swing out of this rail, let's remove this line from the throttle body adapter plate, press on this green tab and swing it out of the way. This is gonna give us more access to lift up this fuel rail. Having said that, let's unplug all the fuel injectors. There are four on each side. Press on the tab and disconnect the connector. And with that done, push the connectors out of the way. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the fuel rail onto the intake manifold. What I like to do at this point is blow compressed air if you have access to it on the bottom of each fuel injector. My intake is actually new and it's clean, so there's no debris there. So all we have to do is pull up on the fuel rail and then the injector should pop out. Now here's one trick that I can share with you and that is to spray a little bit of brake parts cleaner or carburetor cleaner at the base of each injector. That will allow it to slide up a little bit easier. You don't need a lot. You just need enough to get into that seat. Once that's done, wiggle the fuel rail and the injectors should pop out of their seat. There we go. And there it is. Now take a pocket screwdriver and pry this tab off. This is what locks the fuel injector on the rail. I have an absorbent pad underneath to catch all the fuel that will leak because even if you release pressure, there will still be fuel that leaks out. Now pull the injector out and there it is. Take the new injector and slide it into the fuel rail. The fact that there's still fuel dripping out is actually helpful because it'll lubricate that O-ring, help it to slide in a little bit easier. There we go. Put even pressure, spin it around the correct way, and then lock it in with the clip here. There we go. Get that clip on twist it and pull on it to make sure it's fully locked in, which it is. And now you would just repeat the process to the other injectors and then we can install the rail. Spray a little bit of brake parts cleaner on the base of each injector, just like when removing it, that's gonna help lubricate those O-rings to get them slid back in. Press it down and that just bottomed out. It should be that easy. If it gets stuck, something's not right, something's not lined up, so check everything and make sure that it's actually sliding into the intake. Now start in the two bolts that holds the fuel rail in the intake and snug them down. Give them about an eighth of a turn after they bottom out. That should be plenty tight. They're small bolts and if you have the factory intake, uh, they are very fine, small threads. If you have an aftermarket intake, it's gonna be plastic intake. It's gonna have a coarse threaded screw that screws into a plastic insert. And regardless of which style it is, you're not gonna wanna strip that out. So an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out should be plenty. Okay, tighten that up. Now plug in all the injectors. When you plug these in, make sure they click. If you don't hear a click, it's likely not locked in. 
and can come unplugged as you drive, which would not be good. Lastly, bring this line over, clip it back onto the intake here, the throttle body adapter. Make sure that clicks as well. And at this point, you're done on this side, do the same on the other side. With our job complete, put the relay back into its spot. There we go, press it all the way down. And then of course, bring the cover in, make sure you don't catch any wires in the way. Lock that on. And what you're gonna wanna do next is stick the key in the ignition, turn it to the on position, Wait a few seconds, shut it off, turn it back to the on position. This primes the fuel system, it lets that fuel pump run. Shut it back off and back on. And at this point, if you turn the key to start it, it should start. It might stumble a little bit as it tries to build up that fuel pressure, but it should start. There we go. Awesome, job is done. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.